Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, good afternoon to Andrew McDonald, senior coach of the Australian men's team. Thanks for coming today. Uh, we'll get underway. Um, as always, if you have a and uh, we'll try to get around that in the next 20 minutes. If you have a question, let me know in the um, attack box now. Sorry, raise your hand, please. Thanks, Cole. Hi, Andrew. Firstly, um, have you seen any change in Pat over the last few days and any change in the atmosphere or anything like that around the team? Um, no, not as yet. No, no significant change. I think, um, you know, Pat has always led in his own way um, when he hasn't had the title. So I think there'll be, there'll be no change there. I think what will start to happen, though, is obviously over the next few days as we lead into the first test match, there'll be a lot more conversations um, with Pat from a coaching uh, staff point of view, just trying to build um, and obviously put his stamp on, on what he wants the team to look like. And he'll be working closely with the coaches and also Steve Smith and, and other senior players as to what that looks like. But um, yeah, so far, no, no changes that I can, I can see. And also just today in the uh, one day game, Alex Carey scored a century. How much influence will that have on the decision as to who plays wicket keeper or was it only purely based on the, on the keeping skills? Yeah, that's one for the selectors to work through. Um, you know, obviously Payne, uh, stepping away from the game it has opened that slot up and yeah the selectors will work through that um it's white ball cricket um but you know any forms good form as we like to say um so yeah that'll be something to work through we've obviously got um, josh inglis in camp with us at the moment so he starved the match opportunities um alex carey um, was named in the australia race squad um as a keeper as well so um yeah they've got some options we've got options there um and that, that's the beauty of it it's always better to have options than no options so look forward to whichever way that goes and um the start of someone's test career Alex. Hey, Andrew um have you guys made any plans for how the teams are going to shape up for we uh, Wednesday's practice game yeah well for, for those who aren't here there's been a fair bit of weather around so we're sort of challenging what our um, best preparation looks like for the first test match, um, taking into consideration, you know, there's the possibility of, uh, or the option of, of having a, an intra-squad match, um, depending on weather, what we get tomorrow um, here in quarantine, and depending on how the guys all come into camp. So we've got guys on different preparations and we'll build the individual's program and, and, and hopefully come up with the best prep for each individual and as a team collectively leading into, into the first test match. How have you gone with the centre wickets? A couple of the bowlers, Pat himself said, um, the guys have been able to get some really good spells in under their belts. Um, how have you felt the bowlers' preparation has been from your perspective? Yeah, it's something that's been discussed um, you know, a few weeks ago, coming sort of out of the, the T20 World Cup. Um, yeah, I think we've made, made the best of what we've had. We've only sort of missed one main session, uh, for want of a word, up here, um, which is a hit out in the centre. So um, we've been able to creep a few more overs into the guys in the other sessions. So we feel they're right where we need them to be, um, prepping, they're pulling up well from every session. Um, so, yeah, so far, so good. Um, it's always going to be a, a shortened prep and, you know, less than ideal um, switching formats and quarantine and all that sort of stuff. But I think that's, you know, the art of a modern-day cricketer is to be able to adapt to that and, and make sure that they're ready to go for the first test match. And there'll be no excuses from our end. And I'm sure there'll be no excuses from, from England's end as well. Last one from me, um, your role is very important in the T20 space, obviously getting the matchups and the bowlers in the right frame and working with the captain in terms of strategy. How does that change in the test match mode? Um, what are you talking to the bowlers about? What are you working with Pat in particular about his own sort of workload management and, and managing the bowlers around him? Yeah, clearly, obviously, the, the T20 game's a little bit shorter, so you can, I suppose, design it a little bit more and it happens really, really quickly. But, yeah, we'll probably have a session-to-session -session approach um, with the way that we do things tactically. A, a test match is really hard to predict across five days. So um, a lot of our planning will go into uh, the opposition. We'll have uh, rough plans. But uh, until you sort of land for that first session, see what the conditions are actually doing, then, then you go from there. So we'll probably take it as a session-by-session -session approach. Um, you know, from Bowles' perspective, I'll be plugging into to Paddy uh, as I normally do and, and with the other bowls as well. And I'm sure that JL, um, he'll be plugging into to Paddy and, and Smudge um, as the two captains as well, just around the, the final stamp off on, on tactically what we're going to do in the upcoming sessions and, and then the ability to you know, shift from there depending on the information that's coming off the field and, and depending on you know, what information that we may be able to assist and um, provide to the players uh, from off field and, and, and give them maybe some options at, at times. Thanks, man. Mel Farrell. Thanks, Cole. Hey, Andrew, just wondering how, how you see, especially with your invo involvement with the bowlers, uh, just and, and the discussions you're going to have with Pat over the next few days, 
the the sort of things that you're going to talk to him about, you know, about the the challenge specific challenges that he's going to to have, and and how you see that relationship as as working between him and Steve Smith. Oh, I think it's a really good uh, dynamic. Um, you know, you've got a former captain underneath underneath a new captain. That that's always very handy. Um, you know, he's going to draw upon that experience. He's got other senior players around him as well. So we've got great confidence that the, the players that are going out on the field um, amongst each other will be able to problem solve uh, on, on the go out there with the amount of cricket intellect that's out there. So um, there's not too many concerns about once they cross over the rope. In terms of the conversations that I'll be having to Pat, um, they won't be too dissimilar to what we normally do in terms from a bowler tactical point of view. Um, obviously, Jay will then be involved in, in the final tick-off, as I said, of the tactical, um, you know, whatever's built. Um, so, yeah, I don't see the conversations from my end as an assistant coach and the bowling coach um, changing a hell of a lot with Pat. Um, I think the conversations that will probably significantly change it, um, you know, clearly from, from JL to Pat, uh, there'll be more engagement there. There'll be more involvement. Um, they were spending a lot more time um, in the build. And we saw that with Tim Payne, spent a lot of time with the, with the coach, um, you know, building and trying to implement um, plans, you know, across his tenure. So I think that'll be the big shift, the amount of time that the Pat and, and JL spend together. Um, so, yeah, from, from my point of view, I don't see a, a hell of a lot changing um, in my role. And just um, any, obviously those guys change formats a lot, but that they have played a lot of white ball cricket lately. And I know you talked a bit about the difficulties of, of preparation, but has that added, a, I guess, another a string, another challenge in the fact that they've been focusing so much, for example, the likes of Josh Hazelwood on white ball cricket for the, for the past several months? Yeah, I think quarantine's helped with that. The, the fact that we've had you know, two weeks to, to shift. Um, so we saw what happened to New Zealand um, and, and India going straight out of the World Cup and into a test match after three T20s within a week. So I think that's a greater challenge. But we've had a bit of time to, you know, just sit back, um, you know, build. We've had fantastic facilities up here. Um, the weather's been challenging at times, but we've still been able to get on in, in the centre. So, you know, the facilities have really aided the preparation. So... As I said earlier, I think we'll be really, really, really well prepared. And, and also these guys have, have got a lot of test experience to draw upon. Um, so changing formats is something that they've been able to do, do, do and deal with across their careers. Um, so this will be no different. But I think the, the advantage in this one is that we've had two weeks of, of quarantine training to, to shift gears into, into test match mode. And then we've got another eight days on the other side of that. So um, I, I don't think there's too many Australian teams that would have had, you know, potentially a month to build into, into, into a Red Bull series. Um, so... I think that's a real positive. So, as I said earlier, I don't think there'll be too many excuses come, uh, you know, that first session at the Gabba. Thanks. Justin Chadwick. Yeah, good day, Andrew. I just wanted to ask you about the pace bowling stocks and in particular, Jai Richardson. What have you guys made of, of his form in the shield and, and what do you think his chances are of, of maybe being able to edge one of the other guys out for that first test? Really positive return, clearly on the back of um, some shoulder issues last year. So it's great to see him, him up and running. Um, you know, George Bailey, you know, he's been casting a, a keen eye along with Tony Dottome, um, following that form line very, very closely. So there's no doubt that he'll be putting some pressure on, um, you know, across the summer, whether that's the first test match, whether that's later on uh, in the summer. But, you know, there's three um, very, very handy bowlers um, in front of him at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 going to be one for the selectors. Um, but for me, it's, it's just about getting those fast bowlers prepared and ready uh, as options for the selection panel. And, I think we've got four really, really good ones there. And you can throw Michael Nessa, who's been, you know, on the cusp, uh, you know, over the last couple of seasons as well. So you know, not many people are talking about him at the moment, but, you know, that's purely because he's had a little bit of a hamstring strain, but he's returning and he'll be fit and available also. So across those five bowlers, we think we've got great depth, which is exciting. And just further to um, Alex Carey and Josh Inglis, what are you guys looking for in particular in, in terms of that selection battle? And is there someone that's clearly ahead right now? Or is it still really up in the air? I think it's really still up in the air. Um, I think if it was clear, then there may have been an announcement. So I'm sure that the selectors will be uh, taking in all the information. It's the last game today, I think domestically before, um, you know, we switch our, our focus in, into the test match. Um, so it may have just been a checkpoint potentially tomorrow where they'll meet or, or the following day. So we've got plenty of time before the first test match, but I'm sure once they're clear that that'll be an announcement um, because we've got an Australian game and obviously an Australia A game as well. So the, the preparation will split um, into sort of two camps from the fifth um, of, of next month onwards. So that'll be something that'll become clear, I, I would say, over the next few days uh, for us as coaches and then communicate it externally. Cool. Thanks for that. Oh. Um, Andrew, is there any scope to move back that the 
practice game sort of to later in the week? Like, sort of how much emphasis are you guys placing on that match? Or do you need sort of a few days lead up into that first test, ideally? Yeah, it's pretty difficult to, to put a, a three-day game really close to, to that test match. Clearly, obviously, recovery and, and that type of thing. So, as I said earlier, with the weather, the way it's been and, and you know, a lot of different people coming from different matches and quarantine and that type of thing, we'll be building a lot of individual programs in and around that. So, um, we'll try to have each individual prepared best. But, yeah, the closer you play a game to another game uh, challenges you in terms of your recoveries. Um, and then, obviously... Um, you know, compound interest of back-to-back games is, is, is never ideal, in particular for fast bowlers, a, a lot easier for batters. Last one here by the looks of Mel Farrell. Yeah, thanks again. Um, just, just wanted to ask you about uh, Michael Nisa. He's obviously someone who has been carrying the drinks for a long time now in that side, and there's quite a buzz about Jai Richardson sort of coming in now and challenging. Just... Where where do you see him, and can you give us a, a, a an like an indication of just what kind of team person he's been uh, while always waiting in the wings? As far as a, a team member go, there's there's not many better, and that's um, you know putting him yeah probably on a pedestal, and that's not to dismiss that, dismiss others as well. But um, and in terms of uh, his playing ability, he's right up there, and as I said, that's why I sort of mentioned that we've got five really good options in that squad. Um, a, a 15 so um, yeah I, I would, he's right in the conversation um, he was injured at the time when he got selected as well so that, that probably suggests how um, valued the selectors see him um, and then it'll just be a case of when that opportunity arises what are the conditions um, is it a pink ball game is it the MCG stump to stump so I think there'll be a bit of design in the way that the, the selectors are thinking about that um, and hence why they've picked probably five uh, slightly different bowlers to, to really complement each other. And, and that's the art, I think, when you put three fast bowls together with your spinner is making sure that attack complements each other for those conditions and that opposition. Um, and, and the selectors will be drilling into that and, and making sure that they make the right decision. What what sort of conditions do you think would give him the greatest chance of, of being selected? Uh, I think any time the ball's shifting, I think he's a, he's a real handful. Uh, we've seen what he does uh, up here in Brisbane uh, at the Gabba. Uh, ping ball game, it, it shifts. Um, but that's not to dismiss his ability to hold line and length on the lower wickets as well. So I think he's quite versatile. Um, but if you said when he's at his best, if he's got a little bit of um, uh, lateral movement uh, in, in the air, I think that that always assists him and he becomes a handful. But um, as I said, he's evolved into a, a really good bowler across all conditions. Um, can't speak highly enough of him. Uh, what is it that you say he's, he's, what, there aren't many better team uh, team people? Why, why would you say that about him? What is What is it he does? Oh, I think he's just the ability to impact when you're not playing, uh, the ability to assist, um, just do those little things, um, you know, keep the energy and buzz around the group. Um, it's always difficult being a tourist and, and sometimes you can have some flat days, but he keeps fronting up. Um, and those that have been on, on the bench for extended periods of time, he's missing a lot of cricket during that time. Always positive, always fronting up, the intensity which he trains at. Um, so that's what I'm looking for and other people will be looking for other things, but um, that's what I see in him. Um, yeah, quality person. Great, thank you. Thanks, Mel. Make sure you pass those uh, answers on to the chat. Thanks, everyone, uh, for joining us today. Um, and thanks to Andrew McDonald. Thanks so much. Thanks, Cole. Thanks, Andrew. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Cole.